You guys are doing crash cart testing as well, or well, uh, training with people. What, what, do you, what do you show people here? Well, when they first come over to here, we teach them how to put these pads on because this is what you're going to need. Ask them where you put these. They can either put them here and here, or you can put them front and back. They're diagrams. They're, they show you right there where they go, so if I you see. have any questions. So, so what exactly does a crash cart do for those of us who are not in medicine? Crash cart should have everything in it that you need. And if somebody has arrested or is not breathing or not have a heartbeat, that should be everything you need on this crash cart. And, and, and exactly, it, it sends an okay. It sends an electrical impulse and things that that's the defibrillator. The defibrillator does that. Mm -hmm. That's what, yep. these pads. I see. Right. So you have your medicines in your top drawer. You just need to be familiar. You know, you have your medicines that we would use in your top drawer. And so these medicines actually has something to do with getting a person revived? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You follow an algorithm, yeah. and it, you know, which medicines to give, depending on what their heart pattern looks like on here. You give certain medicines in this cart. So this is a very specialized sort of science. You have to go through a lot of training. This is, this, do, do all, or this is something that all nurses do, or this is emergency nurses, or what? The critical care nurses of the hospital. Right. So like your ICU, your OR nurses, your ER nurses. Telemetry. If they process. have, a, if a patient, if you're going to have a patient that's going to be monitored on a heart monitor, you need to be ACLS certified in, in order to take care of them. Right. And that is ACLS meaning you know how to use the crash cart, you know how to defibrillate, you know how to recognize lethal rhythms on a monitor. And you know what medicines are required for certain things. So when people call for a crash cart, it really boils down to you. You, you see what you, you have these pads. You put them on the uh, the patient. Hook them, to the Hook them to the monitor. The monitor tells you what you need to know as to how to proceed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're doing C you know, you're gonna be doing CPR because if you need a crash cart and you need to be get, getting stuff out of here, your patient most likely does not have a pulse or they are not breathing or both. So you've got a team that's doing CPR while this is all going on. You're prepping, you're getting ready to do use the crash cart. Yes. And so now here you have a, is this a... Uh, that is a rhythm right there you do not want to see. You that's want a, to see that's that. a lethal, that, lethal If you don't rhythm. get out of that rhythm, you will die. I mean, really? no doubt about it. That's it. That's one of the two. That's one of them. So that is a heart. We'll actually be doing that. That's sort of a, a super fast. That sounds like probably 200 beat a minute oh, yeah, type. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Ventricular tachycardia is what it's called. VTAC. We call it VTAC. And so you're not getting blood to your vital organs, yeah. nothing. Nothing. So the scenario is you'll have a, a trained uh, a, a pair of people doing a CPR. You're getting your pads and stuff ready. You put them on the monitor. The monitor is, well, like I said, these little things here where you, that's where you position the monitor to get the yep. correct. So, so then you're looking at that thing and you're saying, okay, this is what the situation is. We need to proceed by giving, administering certain types of medicine. Well, when you first see that, you need to shock them. Oh, really? That's the first thing you do is shock them. Okay. Somebody's doing CPR the whole time this is going on. Somebody's doing this, but when you see that, then you need to defibrillate them. Does the defibrillator take them out of that rhythm? Is that what it does? Sometimes. Ideally. That's what it's supposed Ideally. to do, but it doesn't always do it. And that's, I see. That's and if, if it comes back into that, after you shock them, they may still be doing that, you need to do CPR again. And then for start two your minutes. medicines, your algorithms. And then shock them again. If you're still in that, you got to shock them again. Shock them twice. Mm-hmm. Then you give them medicine, start giving medicine. Now you said algorithms. Uh, that, that, by those you mean that these are like the formulas, these are the standards by which the proven, tried and true things that medicine have... American Heart Association. These okay. are the things they've come up with. Fantastic. And they so change what, them like every five years. Or they don't change them, but they look at them every five they years. They tweak them. To tweak them to see things we might do, need to do better. So let's say the person is not in that rhythm right there. They're actually, they're, their heart has stopped. The, then then what typically might you do if that were the case? That's the other one CPR. that you might see. And that one too, you need to shock. But that right there, the heart's just quivering. This one right here, it looks like that. Shock. Just looks like a bunch of little this quiver. And so they're almost they're practically for all intents and purposes. They will die in that other rhythm or this one either one. They will die. Wow. If you don't change it. So but if they are flat on a systole, yep. then you need to do CPR. CPR, 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 yeah. CPR and give your all your algorithms. Are both you ladies in uh, um, emergency? I uh, I'm not in now. I used to yeah, be I used so to be. I used to be the manager in the yard. You did for a long, oh. long time. Are you? Are you? Where are you now? I see you. I audit charts. You audit charts and stuff. Like she I said, still but got her critical care experience. Oh yeah, I, I love it. it. I'll be back in the ER one day. What's it like? What's it like to uh, come out of your training and all of a sudden you have to do this? What's What's that like? I mean, you just do, um, ride a bicycle. Really? You remember it? But I, I work every day still. 
But if I had to have it, let's say I have a great streak where it's maybe a month that I don't have a patient mm -hmm. that codes. As soon as it, as soon as I have a patient that codes, goes into one of these rhythms, it is like you you just right. turn it on and you are a machine. You become a machine and you have it in your head and you're trained. And that's why we have these days to refresh us because it'll come back. It's like riding a bicycle. It'll come back and you do what you can to save that patient. Is this something that happens all the time? Well, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's I'd say on, working in the ER daily to weekly basis. In the people. ER. Wow. Well. Mm -hmm. And it does also happen on the floors. The uh, the gear you use to train here, it's just, it's just weird looking stuff, but it's it's all, I guess, anatomically, mm -hmm. just like what you would ex experience with a patient? Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. well, this is my, this uh, monitors the rhythms you would see, and I mean, this is the monitors we currently use. So this is, and this is what um, the crash carts that we use on the floor look like. This, this cart's set up like we have. Those are the drips that are already pre-mixed. If you have to hang any of these, dopamine. That are pre I see magnesium sulfate. Dopamine, dopamine, lidocaine. and lidocaine. Those are the four that are pre-mixed. And then you have like you know your supplies, IV supplies, suction in the bottom, blood pressure cuff, flashlight, flashlight to check pupils. Well, if you're in a dark place for some reason, you know you need something. something. Um, you also have this tackle box. And this is an airway box. So if your patient's like not doing well with the cardiac rhythms and you're doing CPR, you need to get an advanced airway at some point. And so this box will help the doctor. The doctor will be able to intubate, put I a see. tube down their throat yeah, the, through to the rest. That's what he'll use to do it. Everything you need to do an intubation here. And here's the tube. The tubes are in here. Now do respiratory therapists do the same sort of stuff? They assist. Assist, okay. Yeah. But the doctor's the actual one who does right. gets the Innovation. airway. At Blue gotcha. Ridge, the only people that can intubate are the physicians. Gotcha. But the respiratory therapists are in the room, and they um, once the doctor gets the airway, they manage the airway from that point on. Right. They bag them and provide the oxygen. They'll put them stuff. on the ventilator. They they do that so the doctor it can help us focus on other things, you know, with the patient, the rhythms, and making sure the medicines we're given is right. Make sure we're shocking them when we need to shock them. Charting yeah. everything. Make sure you write down everything at the correct times. And it is a team. You said earlier it's a team. It, it really it, it does take a team. You have somebody, you're calling out orders so somebody can write down times to put in the chart. You ladies work at, uh, you've worked at Valdez, you work at Grace. Yes. Have you worked at other hospitals? Mm -hmm. But been here the whole time. Mm -hmm. What do you owe? Oh, seven years. Seven years. What do you think about the team here? I like it. I like everybody I work with. They're really dedicated, good people. Mm -hmm. You People. save a lot of lives? Yes, that's why I think you have to become close and you have to trust your coworkers, especially in the setting where I work. And, you, and, and you're with these people more than I'm with my family. So you have to love each other, like each other, and you work very well. With, well, like I know what some people don't like to do, and they know what I don't like to do, and you're just a team and work mm -hmm. together. Seven years for you. How many years with you? 32 years. 32 years. Wow. Thank you for 32. Well, it's awesome. I mean, I, th thank you for showing me. This is very fun for, for just a guy that knows nothing about medicine. That's just awesome. All right, yeah. fantastic.